Hi guys, this is Rick from Line 6. I'm the Senior Technical Support Lead here at Line 6, and today I'm going to show you how to get your new Pod Studio UX2 up and running with GarageBand 09. Uh, now before we get started, I just want to explain to you guys that PodFarm can be used two different ways with your Pod Studio device. It can be used as a standalone application, which means you can just launch it on its own, dial in tones, presets, and just jam along with it, or you can launch it from within GarageBand as a plugin. We're going we're gonna to do both. Um, right now I'm going to focus on the standalone side of, of PodFarm and just kind of take you through it a little bit. Um, again, um, if, uh, if you've installed uh, PodFarm from your disk, you may want to check with the Line 6 Monkey application to make sure you have the latest version of PodFarm. Um, Monkey will help you update that. Um, if, uh, if you'd like, you can also go to www.line6.com forward slash software and download um, any of the latest versions of our free software, including PodFarm and the Monkey. Um, so let's go ahead and, and uh, get started with PodFarm. I've got a little PodFarm shortcut uh, in my tray down here on my MacBook Pro. If you're not sure where the application lives, it lives in your hard drive, in your Applications folder, within the Line 6 folder here. And that's where all of our, our Line 6 apps live. So you see Monkey and PodFarm in here. Okay, I've already got um, PodFarm standalone launched, which is actually what I'm using to record this uh, tutorial right now. So I've got it down here. I'm, let me just bring it up. I've got what we call a dual tone going on here, meaning I've got my guitar patch right here in tone one, my plexi jump lead amp, and my compressor. And down here I've got my vocal patch, which is just a gate, a preamp, some compression, and a little bit of reverb. Uh, so uh, PodFarm standalone, pretty cool. You can, uh, you can dial in uh, any tone you want and just jam along with it. Um, you can dial in uh, uh, deep edit your amp by double-clicking on the amp. Um, that goes the same for all of your effects. Uh, it's a carol carousel style application. So if I click on gear over here, I can actually scroll through all of my different amps and effects. And you can also just click up here to drop to drop them down if you'd like. We've got um, a presets button here, a tuner button. We've got a mixer. Um, uh, so uh, we've got our panel view, which again you can just double click on the on the amp right here. Uh, we've also got uh, a way to set our channels. Um, I've got channel one or tone one set to instrument, which is connected to my guitar, which is plugged into the normal instrument input on the UX2. And I've got mic one, uh, my dynamic uh, microphone right now, uh, plugged into the mic one XLR in the, on the UX2. So I've got a dual, dual tone patch going on right here. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the guitar, and I'll, uh, I'll play a little bit so you guys can hear what it sounds like. This is just a plexi jump lead. Um, I've got... If you click on here, the cab up here, I've got a 57 on access mic. I've got my my uh, my room at 88%, so the, the cab is way back in the room. And I've got a 412 uh, 1967 green 20s cab, and you can change that by simply dropping this down. You can also change the microphone the same way. So let's hear what this sounds like. Okay, so not that bad. Um, again, uh, you can you can change amps, you can change cabs, you can uh, create your own tone. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to route this signal uh, into GarageBand. And how do you do that? Uh, let's go ahead and do that right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and launch GarageBand from our tray. Okay, so GarageBand is launched, and what we got to do first is go to the GarageBand preferences because what we need to do is we need to tell GarageBand what we're using for our main input device, which in this case is the Pod Studio UX2. So the first thing you want to do is click on the GarageBand uh, link up here, drop it down, select Preferences, select Audio MIDI, and make sure your input and output are set to the UX2. Okay, so we're good there. That's rule number one with any recording application. The first thing you want to do is tell it what kind of interface you're using. And the good thing about, about doing it in GarageBand is it's pretty much the same in Logic. It's the same in Digital Performer. And, and that goes uh, across the table for pretty much most uh, DAWs. So let's close out of this. 
Um, okay, now what we want to do is we want to create an audio track. We've got a track already uh, created here. GarageBand did this automatically, but what this is is a MIDI track, and we're not going to use this. We're going to create a real instrument track. There's a couple different ways to do that in GarageBand. You can select track uh, and then go to new track, or even easier, you can just select this little plus sign down here at the bottom. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to select real instrument, and we're going to click on create. Okay, and uh, we've got our we've got our track set here. Down here in the right hand side, our input source is stereo UX uh, one two UX two, which is which is perfectly fine. Okay. Set our monitor to actually let's keep our monitor off. We're gonna monitor from Pod Farm and not through the through the application. So let's see if we got any signal. Okay, you'll notice in the uh, the track I've got signal. And that's a good sign. So we're getting our we're getting our process signal into GarageBand. Fantastic. All we need to do at this point is record. So basically all you want to do is down here in the transport controls in GarageBand, select record, and you're on your way. Okay, let's go ahead and hit stop. I stopped it by just pressing the space bar. All right, and now let's rewind it. Let's see if it'll play back. Okay, looks like it's playing back. The meters show it's playing back, and I'm hearing it in my headphones, so even if we don't hear it in the tutorial, it's working. All right, so I'm going to stop that. Basically, that's it. That's how that's how you route a, a process signal into into GarageBand by using the Pod Studio UX2. Now there is another way to do this, and it's by uh, pulling up PodFarm as a plugin. Um, and w in cases where you'd want to do that, is maybe you wanted to route a dry a dry track like an unprocessed, just straight guitar sound into GarageBand, and then add your effects and your amp modeling afterwards. A lot of people like to work that way because they can just loop a track and then dial in their tone that way. Um, we'll save that for the next tutorial, but um, but um, up until now, we've uh, we registered our product, we've activated it, and we've successfully routed an audio signal uh, from PodFarm into GarageBand. So uh, stay tuned for the uh, the plugin tutorials coming up next. A lot of fun.